All right, thank you for staying with us. Uh, this first leg of the conversation, you know, as I said, will be about the oil sector. You know, there is a proverb, a uh, proverb expression around here that when the owner or the son of a butcher, you know, people that sell meat is now grappling with bones, then something is wrong. And maybe that um, depicts the situation of Nigerians and Nigeria as a country that we are all we are an all producing nation but the issue with accessibility affordability especially with the petroleum product or pms petrol as it's fondly called has been an issue yes we have refineries that dated back to maybe 50 years ago or thereabouts but then since the last 20 years none of these refineries have really been working in fact in the last the last 10 years none of it i mean the ones that are owned by the country in port Harcourt, in kaduna uh, you know, in worry, none of them have produced even an ounce, an oil, drop of oil. But then a company came together, uh, headed by their chairman, Dangote Refineries, by Liko Dangote, you know, put up a refinery, $20 billion worth of refinery, one of the biggest, and the ones that have the highest capacity in the world. It was launched, you know, last year, uh, May, before President Buhari left. One year later, and the, the drama continues, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. But because of time, last Sunday we got the information like trucks are there, you know, at the refinery, and they are ready to lift, you know, petroleum products. That I mean, let me just stick with the PMS thing. And the buses then the lifting. We are hearing it has been lifted. Oh, it hasn't been lifted. Okay, how much are you going to be selling? The NNPCL have said they are going to be the sole buyer of the petrol that will be produced by, you know, the Dangote refinery that raised some questions. Nigerians are saying, why? Why must it be so? Is it a monopoly thing? Is there something underneath that we are not being told? But then the pricing thing, 898 now, was the figure quoted by the NNPCL. And they said in Lagos, after putting every other factor, uh, you know, to pricing, it's going to go for 915 Lagos and slightly higher than that in different parts of the country, in other parts of the country as well. Dango to refinery, you know, company came with a release and said, no, the figure quoted by the NAPCL is not true. So, what is the correct price? NAPCL, I mean, Dangote said, wait till October 1st. And Nigerians are saying, what exactly? We were excited. We were happy that finally maybe the camel, um, I mean, the jinx have been broken and then we can have an indigenous company producing oil and we don't have to grapple with all these queues. Um, and the, but the, 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 the drama is still continuing. This morning we have been joined by Mr. Kalu Aja. Uh, he is an economist, financial expert and analyst. He joins us virtually. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. What do you make of um, these, you know, laymen like us who call it drama, you know, that is a part of importation. I mean, all markets are saying, this price quoted by the NNPCL is even too high. How can an indigenous company, a private company, by the way, uh, be producing fuel here and is even higher than the imported ones? You are the professional here. Mm. What is going on? Well, NNPC it has high costs. That's where we can just explain it. Uh, NNPC has a lot of loans. NNPC is paying the subsidy that we enjoy at the retail price in Nigeria. So those in cost of, I will call them inefficiencies, are built into the retail price that you are paying. So it's not just the price of crude oil, it involves the price of those inefficiencies. That's what you're paying for. So, um, yeah, you call it inefficiency, but you know, uh, let's stick to the, contest this morning of the NNPCL and um, uh, Dangote pricing thing. Let me ask you, is he right? Because Leonard Sig, Femi Falano said, is even illegal for the NNPC to say they are going to be the sole buyer, you know, of PMS from Dangote. What's your assessment of that? Yeah, I think that was a, I saw that news of the sole buyer. I think it was not well communicated. Okay. If you read the the, the 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 statement by the Dangote ED, Mr. Edwin, that's where we got this information from. What he was saying was that Dangote will be the sole supplier 
to NNPC mm. under the in Nigeria because NNPC is the sole importer. So going forward, Dangote will be the only supplier to the NNPC. Not that NNPC will be the only buyer. Mm. No, but Dangote for the subsidy would be the sole supplier. So NNPC cannot go and buy from any refinery in. Mm. Uh, okay. It's paying mm. the subsidy portion. Right. Uh, That's but... what they were trying to communicate. If you've got the money, you can go to Dangote and buy. There is no sole buyer. Dangote wants to sell his products, but they are saying they will supply NNPC the subsidy part, that subsidy arrangement, and go to be the sole supplier under that arrangement. So NNPC is just a, just a marketer. They're no longer a regulator. They can't set prices. They can't indicate who will buy. They can't stop Dangote from selling. That's basically where we are today. All, all right. Uh, you know, I had to say that because that's the information that is in the public space. And you know, marketers have even been talking, many of them through the association are saying, give us access so that we can buy from Dangote as well. Mm -hmm. And so that it won't be the only NNPCL. Are you saying an organization like Ipman does not have the right information because some of their members have been crying every day to say, it shouldn't be only UNNPCL. We ourselves want to buy and it appears they, they, are, they don't have the access to it. So what, where's the disconnect from? I think, is, I think there are issues they are talking about that Dangote's prices are lower, hence their margins are being eroded. They have a different take on the matter entirely. Their issue is that Dangote is coming with lower margins, hence their existing margins, they cannot survive on those margins. Mm. Oil no, or PMS in Nigeria is a derivative of crude oil. And that crude oil is priced in dollars. So it means that it is unaffordable to Nigerians because of the dollar element. It doesn't have to matter the oil is from Nigeria. It's priced in dollars. So there has to be a subsidy one way or the other to keep, make the price affordable. And that's why you see this back and forth. There's a subsidy pricing that we haven't really understood what is going on there. And that's the inefficiency I speak about. So the Ipman guys are not really saying that they don't want to buy. They are saying that the Dangote margins are too low that their existing business model cannot survive with a Dangote, which is a different matter entirely. That I think they wrote to the president on that. So you think uh, this was what pushed uh, major marketers to go for um, importation of PMS rather than buying from Dangote? Because we saw reports that um, um, this pump price, the price from Dangote, uh, you know, has pushed major marketers to import fuel. I, I'm not sure how your cost can be lower if you import and not buy from Dangote. The only way you can get lo <clears throat> lower cost if you import is if you are getting that crude at a discounted price or you're not paying the full price for that crude. There's simply no way you can import and to be cheaper. I think Dangote was explained that his oil, the first one, he imported it from the U.S. Mm. Hence, that price has to got to have that U.S. import price in it. If Dangote can get crude oil from Nigeria and refine local in Nigeria, then you can't really beat that price because all you're going to be paying is freight. But you are going to pay for the crude oil, freight, and all that. So I'm not sure what's going on there. There, there is no way you can beat a local brand new refinery in Nigeria that is going to um, basically refine at a cheaper cost than what you would get abroad. You would pay, still pay for freight, for insurance, from taking it from Europe to Nigeria. So how can it be cheaper? The only way it's cheaper is if you got that crude at a very discounted price or you did not pay full price for it. That's the only way you can be cheaper than a local refiner. All right. So in a, in a recent statement, uh, Dangote Industries or Dangote Refinery made uh you know a formal notification announcements to say that uh, the naira based crude uh, sales to local refineries uh, will commence on october 1 2024 mm. so are you saying that with this development come october 1 2024 nigerians to ex should expect a reduction in the price of pms not really the, if you pay in Naira, it doesn't really change the pricing template for the retail PMS you pay in Nigeria. 
the key drivers to your retail price is the price of crude oil and the exchange rate of the Naira. These two alone are almost 90% of the cost of the local PMS. So even if you pay in Naira, as long as you are paying 1600, which is the current exchange rate, there will be no change in your retail pricing. Or unless the, the, the crude oil is still at $80 a barrel, there will still be no change in your local pricing. The oil has got to be cheaper, i.e. the crude oil price has got to fall or the Naira strengthens for you to see a reduction in the local price of the of PMS or the government subsidizes. So even the price you're seeing today is still subsidized. This, this um, 900, 1000 mm. price you see today is still subsidized. What has been subsidized is not the crude oil, it's the exchange rate, is the price of the crude oil, not the actual import uh, and, and all that. That's the problem. The Naira is weak and uh, the price of crude oil is very, very high and it's in dollars. Yeah. So, Mr. Aja, where do we go from here? When the Dangote refinery was coming up, a whole lot of Nigerians had their hopes up high. But now mm. it seems that yeah. their hopes have been dashed. So, how does the ordinary Nigerian benefit from this all, uh, you know, uh, drama going on, the Dangote refinery, the NNPCL, what people just want is to buy fuel see, the, the, at well, a reduced not... price. Yes. What we're not miss, we're missing here is the fall in production. Mm. You know, in the past, look at 2005, why we didn't really feel the effect of then producing about Yes, please go, go ahead. You can sell, export. So. Hello, Mr. Aja, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, please go ahead. Yes, so the problem is production volumes. The production volume for crude oil in Nigeria is low. It's mm -hmm. less than 1.7 million barrels, which is our budget. So we're not able to produce enough exports and end dollars and then pay for the subsidy. What we are producing is not enough to export any revenue, then take a bit of the revenue and pay the subsidy. We're exporting too little. So the way this should work is if you give Dangote all of NNPC's crude oil allocation, mm -hmm. you make more money when Dangote refines it because he can refine and those byproducts, he's able to sell them. Mm. Currently, when NNPC takes those crude oil out of the country, we don't hear about the byproducts. But if you give the crude to Dangote, he can refine the, 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 the crude oil and those byproducts, he can sell them. That is extra revenues to the NNPC that they can use to subsidize. Mm. So the point I'm making, you can't run away from subsidy if you want a lower price. We have simply moved the subsidy from crude oil, i.e. the local subsidy at the ports, to exchange rate and crude oil. You To get the price down, there has to be a subsidy. How do you fund the subsidy? You export more. You produce more crude oil, sell, then the balance, you use it to fund the subsidy. Not to everybody, but to the very poor. And there are many ways you can do this and still have it accountable all right um you know um two questions for me um mr Aja. one is this there is a directive a presidential directive that um, you know aftermath of uh, the scenario of the ed of the nmbpra you know having a clap back at dangote for saying some things and the stakeholders meeting was called and at, at the end of the day we learned the president said henceforth um, sell um, crude oil to be sold in Naira to Dangote refinery so that everything will be Nairalized, if I may use that word, and there won't be mm. import. I mean, the pressure on the forex and all of it. And so now, just are thinking uh, to okay from the oil wells and um, the production, the supply will be done in Naira. Uh, the payment will be done in Naira. That will not be really, you know, uh, the input of the dollar on this matter in as much the company is there somewhere on the island in lagos and so that um you know ordinarily nigerians um, are thinking maybe we're about to have it 
um, better than we currently have. Are you saying all mm. of that will not have any implication at all, or is just a charade? That's number one. Number two, you kept talking about subsidy and subsidy. Are you saying the NNPCL or any of these, um, you know, factors or the stakeholders, there is still a way we will be paying subsidy on something that is being produced here in Nigeria? Two questions, if you understand it. Yeah, um, to be clear, it doesn't matter if you pay in Naira or dollars. What matters is the exchange rate. If you tell me to pay in Naira and I'm paying the market exchange rate, then it's no difference. You are still going to put on your template, you're going to use 1600. You, you understand what I mean? So in effect, you're just changing currency, but the cost is the same on your template. Crude oil is an oil, it's a dollar-based commodity. You pay in dollars or you pay in Naira. If Dangote was buying the crude at 500 Naira, Instead of 1600 naira, then you would see a reduction in the price at the pumps. But he's paying at full market prices. Mm. So there's no difference in naira or dollars. That's one. The difference has got to come in the production. If you give Dangote more crude oil, he can give you more byproducts, jet A1, bitumen, that you can export and make revenues to cover your subsidy costs. That's number one thing. Number two, they, you cannot sell a dollar commodity in Naira without a subsidy. The subsidy has got to be there to make the price fall. And the way you pay for this subsidy, like I said, is when you export the byproducts, you can create, create a fund, and that's when you then pay for the current cost by dipping into that profit from the export of the excess crude to cover the local PMS price. And again, like I said, there are ways you can do it to avoid fraud. You can use the NIN phones with the BVN linked to your car registration number, to your VIN number. So your car is attached to your NIN, it's attached to a cell site. So only Nigerians can buy the fuel and enjoy the subsidy. There are ways to do this, but you can't have cheap gas without a subsidy. Not possible. Mm. Uh, that's, that's, you know, just like my colleague Evelyn said, for many Nigerians watching this program this morning, that's more like hope dashed uh, because we're thinking maybe, you know, the words on the really. street, <laughs> maybe really. it was going to Not be really. a... Yeah, you said? Produce more. Mm. Produce more. You solve the problem. The problem is the production number. Not the... We're focused on the price. Produce more, the price will come down. We are still below budget and OPEC. Yeah. Mm. Oh, all right. Um, you know, one last one, uh, and that was where we started from. What do you think is the underlying factor for these, um, you know, what I call uh, NNPCL says, Dangoto Refinery mm. says, um, all marketers are saying, uh, Nigerians are saying this is needless because the NNPCL will come with one thing, um, the Dangoto will make a report out of that and say, this is not true. And then the ministers of um, oil, I mean, minister of petroleum, oil and gas, the president himself is the substantive minister. And it seems everything is just in a circle. Now, yes, I say, where's the mm. oil? Now, with all these things going on, where does that put the place of affordability, accessibility, and, you know, availability? Yeah, what is going on is that subsidy. It's opaque. So when you see those statements by the NNPC, they are trying to protect their interests. Remember that NNPC technically is insolvent or it's about to go insolvent if they continue to pay the subsidy. So what they are trying to do is to give a way or to get a way where they can still remain in business while Dangote refines and they're able to then have a price that covers their interest rate cost, their dollar exposure, and still keep them in business. That's why you see them saying the price is this, the price is that they, are, they have other things they have to factor in mm. that a local player doesn't have to. They are covering the subsidy and the subsidy is paid by the federation. So IPMA doesn't cover half subsidy. NNPC has subsidy. So, so you're not seeing, that's the unspoken thing you're not hearing. Uh, Mr. Aja, the federal government has repeatedly said we are not paying any subsidy 
Maybe. There is a subsidy. It's, 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 you don't have to be a genius to know that if oil prices go up and down, mm. but your, your PMS price still is the same, there's a subsidy. You don't have to be a genius. There's a subsidy. They can, they can deny. I mean, we're owing marketers 3.5 billion because we haven't paid the subsidy. That's why we're, we're doing what we're doing today. Remember where the NNPC, NNPC itself wrote a letter to say we cannot cover the subsidy going forward. This is the NNPC itself. So we can deny till the, tomorrow, but the facts are the facts. There's a subsidy. Uh, and Mr. Anja, this, that letter you just referred to now, um, you know, came a few days after they had the press briefing to declare, I mean, to talk about the 2023 audit, and they declared, is it 6 trillion or 9 trillion era in profit? And just a few days later, they said they are broke. Well, you know, profit is different from cash. You can declare profit with no cash. Subsidy is paid with cash. So they are paying subsidies with cash. They're declaring a profit on the sale, but they're not collecting their receivables from the Federation. So they make oil sales, they book it as revenue, that becomes profit. But the Federation is not reimbursing them for the cost they have incurred in the subsidy. So you make a paper profit, but in terms of cash, you know, remember they are borrowing on advanced sale of crude oil. When NNPC sells crude oil today, they are paying to a third party and the third party releases revenues back to NNPC. So they don't really have control of their revenues as, as we speak, as, as it is. So it's a very, very opaque organization. It's still owned by the government. Mm. NNPC limited just a name. It's owned by the federal government of the Federation and nothing has changed. And that's why you have all this back and forth and uh, stem that you cannot back up with reality. Yeah. Okay, but Mr. Ajo, do you think this uh, opaqueness uh, going on with the NNPCL contributed to the increase in the pump price some four weeks ago? Nigerians used to buy fuel at maybe 600, 650, depending on the location you are, but Right now, Nigerians are buying at 900, between 900 to 1,150. Do you think we will continue to have this um, rise and drop in the price, pump price of PMS going forward? Yes, because the reason why you were paying 650 was because the, the NNPC was paying the subsidy okay. and the NNPC is getting broke. That's the reason. So NNPC is saying we cannot continue to pay so they removed the part of the subsidy and the price rose up to 800 and so. Mm. So unless you increase production, which means you have to drill more crude oil, mm. then you get more refineries up and running. So Dangote alone can cover Nigeria and export Dangote alone. So NNPC has got about 450,000 barrels locally that's allocated them. If you give Dangote that entire location, your fuel price will come down. Because with Dangote, he can refine the crude into 44 byproducts. And from the sale and export of the 44 byproducts, you can make revenues to cover the subsidy cost. Keep him, you cannot escape subsidy. That's what you must understand. Crude oil is a dollar in, what is the dollar today? 1600. Mm. What was the dollar last year? It was it 1600? So there's no way you can avoid subsidy. In America, the farmers get paid the subsidy. For, for diesel for their tractors. There is nothing wrong with subsidy, but you can't pay everybody a subsidy and you can't run it the way we run it today, which is fraudulent. You've got to have a cleaner way where you can track every Naira spent on the poor, on public transportation for this subsidy uh, PMS. That's how you want to do it. Take an NPC out, complete up from the picture, give the crew to Dangote, let an NPC focus on drilling crude oil, let Dangote refine that crude oil, and then give to the marketers, the price will come down. That's what you you have to do. It's not, that's just what has to happen. Mm. Let's speak to the political interests in the oil sector. Do you think it contributes to the opaqueness in the, the business done by the NNPCL? And also, do you think Dangote Refinery is bad business for NNPCL? <laughs> well, the moment that NNPC is owned by the Federation, which means it's a piggy bank. When the Federation needs money, they go to NNPC. So the, the Saudis have Aramco. It's now a public company it's owned by investors all across the world. Mm. So there are very, very few things Aramco can do. They have to go to the market to raise money. They just can't go in and raid Aramco 
for cash. When NPC is still a government owned enterprise. So the opaqueness, the lack of corporate governance is what we are seeing. That's why they, are, they don't have any refinery working. They have refineries that are working on stage one, but they don't have a refinery working. They have four, all are bad. Dangote is good news for Nigeria. It's the largest single investment in the history of Nigeria. It can change the fortunes of Nigeria. It's a very, very consequential investment. Dangote alone means we don't need an NNPC. NNPC should simply focus on the crude oil side of the business. We don't need a government guy importing PMS, then storing it and distributing it. That's for the private sector. Dangote can take that clearly. He doesn't even need to even pay in Naira. All Dangote needs is supply of crude. If you give him supply of crude, charge him in dollars. He will pay your dollars, he will export, and he will give you PMS. Then the government can say, from the sales we have made to Dangote, we're going to take 10 or 20% and fund the subsidy to the lower end of the market, to the public transportation in Nigeria. That's what you want to do. NNPC has no business telling us the price and all that. No, 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 they have no business at all. Okay, because of time, do you see any silver lining in this dark cloud for Nigerians in the coming weeks or months? Because Nigerians well, just want to have access to PMS and they want to be able to afford it. You said the good news is that you have a, a, you have a $450,000 barrel, barrel refining in Nigeria. You have Dangote. It's there. But we have to use it. It's like Nigeria has got Messi and we put him in the goalpost. That's what we're doing. You've got to get the refinery out and playing. That refinery alone can change Africa, not just Nigeria, Africa. Because once a Dangote refinery is working, many European firms will shut down because he can supply. He's got the crude, he's got the byproduct, he's got the scale. So use him. We, this back and forth is exasperating. That's the silver lining. $20 billion investment in Nigeria, Dangote refinery. You can count the number of $20 billion investments in America or China, you can count it, but we have one here, so use it. All right, we'd like to thank you, specialist, Mr. Carlo Arja, economist and financial analyst. Thank you for your professional takes and also your submissions this morning. Thank you, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah um, that's it, you know, um, it, it's good that we speak um, truth to power. And we talk about the reality, but for so many persons, they will feel like, oh, really? With all these high hopes and everything. But then it's better not to be living with uh, one fantasy thinking, you know, up in the sky, but to be grounded and tell ourselves the truth, because that's what we do here on this program on Money Spring, on Western Spring Television. We take this quick break. When we return, we switch our gears. Stay with us.